all despite their victory last night to even up the series at a game apiece with the White Sox. Bob wrote, Bob, a longtime um, baseball columnist in New York with the, the Post and the News and, and now NJ.com, uh, he wrote that there is absolutely zero consideration, no matter how the season goes, that the Yankees are going to relieve Brian Cashman of his duties. Zero chance. Zero. So we're going to have Bob on in a couple of minutes to give us more insight on that. But that's kind of the way most people figure it's going to go anyway, considering that Brian does have three years left on his contract, that big money. He has the ultimate trust of, of Hal Steinbrenner. And also in the story, Peter, it kind of intimates that the guy who might be on the hot seat, just because he has a year left on his contract, is the Yankee manager Aaron Boone. Didn't say that Boone was going to get fired, but did say that if there is going to be a move because they don't make the playoffs, it is much more likely that it's Boone than it is Cashman. So it doesn't say anything about uh, the rest of the front office or the analytics group or whatever, but it does say that there's no consideration whatsoever for relieving Brian Cashman of his duties as the general manager of the Yankees. So I found that very interesting. I found that very definitive from Bob, who certainly doesn't write things like that. Um, to get clicks, he's going to write what sources tell him. So uh, Yankee fans, I'm sure, the ones that call in and scream that everything that's wrong with the Yankees is Cashman's fault. And I will tell you this, the roster construction this year has been very bad. The injuries have been just ridiculous. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the health and science part of the Yankees, that's all hired by Brian. And putting together the roster is Brian and his staff as well. So... Uh, if this team doesn't make the playoffs, I don't think it's on Boone at all. And I've said that over and over. Seems like that struck a nerve with Yankee fans, Peter, that you know Boone's part of the problem as well. I don't think they know. I really don't, all due respect. I don't think they know exactly what a manager does in this day and age. And they also they don't appreciate the fact that this team has been ravaged by injuries. Other teams have too. Other teams have too. I mean, you look at the Astros and um, the, the amount of games they've lost from Jordan Alvarez and and uh, Jose Altuve, and still they're having a good year. Um, but the the fact that the, the roster uh, just didn't even have a left fielder, didn't have a third baseman going into the season. Uh, Rodon's been out for half the year. The fact that Boone has them four games over five hundred, I think would indicate that he hasn't lost a team, Peter. I, absolutely. And I, I, the, the, the news today sort of uh, worries me for Aaron Boone because – it's sort of my opinion, Michael, that, that if, if nothing were to happen this particular season, assuming, of course, that things continue to not go swimmingly and they don't make the playoffs or they maybe get swept in the first or in the, in, in the wild card or whatever, the fact that there's no way anything would happen to Cashman, to me, Michael, that just raises the, the chances that something does happen to Boone. And I cannot see how in good conscience you could look at this team and if they do, in fact, fail this season, view Aaron Boone as more of the culprit than Brian Cashman. I, I think it's like almost impossible to see it that way. And I, I think what it does is it comes down to contractual status, too. First of all, Brian's been here 30 years and has three years left on his contract. And, and as far as I know, I think he makes like 4 or $5 million a year, if not more. And Aaron Boone doesn't make near that. He has just a year left. And what we've seen from Hal so far, he doesn't like to pay people to not work. And he is... Not a guy who fires people just for the theatrics of it. That's not what he does. That's what his dad did, but that's not what Hal does. So uh, I think he still trusts in Brian Cashman. He really does. But, you know, we've had him on the air, Peter. And he said, if this team doesn't make the playoffs, I'm going to ask some serious questions. So if those serious questions are not questions about whether or not Brian did a good job, well, then the serious questions are going to be on Boone. And I think that the Yankees' ownership is savvy enough to know that their fan base is furious and to just run it back with the same people in charge would be sending a bad message to them. So I, I'm kind of nervous that Boone's going to be the sacrificial lamb if they don't make it. Not because he's done a bad job, but you have to throw chum in the water every now and then for the fish. And the chum would be, well, look, we changed managers. So, again, Klappish in his story is not saying that Boone is going, but he's saying that if there is a change, there's no chance that it's Brian. 
that it would if there was a change of those two out two, it's more likely to be Boone than it is Cashman. So we'll talk mm-hmm. to uh, Clapp in about four minutes. I did want to quickly shift, Peter, because I'm sure you saw Hard Knocks as of 40 years. A colleague at two different newspapers, the Post and the News, and now he's the baseball columnist at NJ.com, and he had that kind of explosive story today that said Brian Cashman isn't going anywhere. Bob Clappish, and he joins us now on the show. Bob, it's uh, it's Michael and Peter. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, guys, and thank you for having me on. All right, so let's talk inside this story. The, the way you wrote it was, if there's a change... It's not going to be Cashman. But the one thing that jumped out at me in the story was it's not so much that they think that Cashman's been great uh, and without criticism, but Hal just doesn't have the stomach for, like, going through a search and changing the whole thing. Is that is that pretty much what you're trying to convey there? Yeah, Michael. I mean, uh, I think ever since Hal took over, took over for his father and his brother, his deceased brother, Hank, he's been a reluctant owner. He. He just doesn't like the spotlight. He does not like making tough decisions. He's a very shy guy, and you know that, Michael. I mean, having interviewed him so many times yourself, he's just, he's the antithesis of his father. And he was dragged and pulled and came in kicking, screaming, to run the Yankees. If he'd had his choice, he would have never gotten involved. So he is the owner. He accepts the responsibility of the Steinbrenner name, but he's in every way possible not George Steinbrenner. That includes firing people. He just doesn't like to do it. He's trusted the organization to Brian Cashman for many, many years. It's now Brian's team. It used to be George's team. It used to be George's philosophy. It's now Brian's. And Hal has just basically allowed that to happen. Um, and the, and, and the, basically the return on the investment has been a winning year every year since Brian took over in 98. That's been the agreement since up to this point, and, and it's not going to change. But if they don't make the playoffs, Bob, and at the end of the year you look up and the New York Yankees are in last place, in the American League East, that won't get anybody's attention? Oh, absolutely. And I said that in the column today, that no Yankee manager, and I'm going to separate this now between Boone and, and, and Cashman, no Yankee, it's not survivable for any Yankee manager to finish last. It's one thing to not make the playoffs, okay? You cannot possibly make it every single year. What Tory did was, uh, with an outlier, I mean, Joe, uh, Joe Girardi didn't make it for four separate times, four separate different years during his tenure. But he never finished last. If the Yankees do finish last, I, I find it hard to believe that Aaron Boone will be back. At that point, I think Steinbrenner will force Cashman to find another manager. Even though Boone has another year in his contract, last place is just unacceptable for any Yankee team. You know, I've said this over and over, though, Bob. I, I think it would be almost hypocritical and somewhat disingenuous to pin this on Boone if they finish last. I look at the fact that they're four games over five hundred with a completely flawed team, roster construction that's questionable, and another year of a slew of injuries. I don't think Boone's done a bad job at all. No, he's not done a bad job. And look, he's a great guy. Uh, everyone says it, and it is true. He's a good person, and the players like him. There's a, there's a there's a healthy atmosphere in that clubhouse. Uh, he certainly don't have the problems that the, let's say the White Sox do, and that's a, that's largely due to, to to Boone. He's a good human being. The players that thrive in that because they 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 know that they have a quality person at the top. However. This is a big however. You can be a certain kind of manager with a 100-win team. And Aaron Boone was the perfect manager for a 100-win team because he keeps the harmony. He keeps the peace. He doesn't let the big egos clash with each other. He is he's the perfect guy, basically, to let a team that good run on autopilot. But, and again, here's the but, you have to be a different manager when your team is winning 85 or 90 games. You have to be a different person. You have to be able to exert pressure on your players and say, this is not good enough. And that, in that respect, Boone is lacking. He just has not emotionally equipped. I don't know what the, what the deficit is, but he has not been the right kind of manager for this, for this particular team in this particular season. He, the, the Yankees need more from him, and he hasn't provided it. Well, so ahead, you don't. You, I, I'm so I'm assuming, Bob, you don't disagree with the assessment based on what we learned from your article that if things don't improve, nothing will change with Cash, but Boone very likely could be gone. I, that's that's the way I was told, and I, I I believe it. I think that Boone will be gone if the Yankees finish last or next to last. I don't even think not not making it to the playoffs would be a damning indictment against them. I think if the Yankees played well and they finished a the game out, you know, came down to the last game of the season, if they were competitive all the way through, 
I think even that would be forgiven by Hal Steinberg. But finishing last, uh, absolutely not. And I think there'd be there'd be a price to pay also on Cashman's part. It won't be with this job. I mean, he's he's got a contract through 2026. He's not getting fired. That was made very clear to me. I don't, and I and I I believe that he's not getting fired. However, if the Yankees finished last, I think Hal Steinberg would go to Cashman and say, "Look, the way you're operating isn't working anymore. Whatever you do, you it's time to change your analytics. Your love of analytics is not." returning anything on investment. We're finishing last and something is wrong here. It's up to you to find a new method to find to win games and evaluate talent. I could see that happening. Right, so when you look at this team, Bob, I mean, you've been around the game forever and we both known Cashman for 30 years since he was an intern at the Yankees. What has gone wrong? What's the reason for the struggles? Well, look, almost every, every assumption that the Yankees made, uh, that the hierarchy made at the start of the season has fail to materialize. I mean, nobody thought that, that Severino would be one of the worst pitchers in, in the major league. Nobody thought that Radon would be this bad. I mean, they didn't spend $162 million on this guy thinking that he'd be a plus-plus starter. He could be Gary Cole's wingman. And there was no reason to believe otherwise. He was coming off a great season with the Giants. I know he's been injured, but he had had a, a clean season in 2022 in San Francisco. He was the most sought-after pitcher on free agency, and the Yankees made the right move. Everybody applauded Alfred shelling out that kind of money. And nobody saw this coming. He's been terrible. He's given up eight home runs and 28 innings. The ERA is almost eight. That's been a complete shock to the team. So, and, and finally, four veterans, all four veterans, LeMayhew, Donaldson, Stanton, uh, and Rizzo, all four got old in a hurry. All four stopped producing at the same time. That was not foreseen either. So you take all those all those factors combined into one, and you have a team suddenly that has almost no weapons. You have Cole, you have Judge, you have a good bullpen, you have a good closer in Holmes, but that's it. That's all you got, and that's not enough to compete in the A.M. Is So what, what would happen if right now Cashman's contract situation wasn't what it was? If he, if he was in the same contract timeline-wise that um, Boone was in, do you still think there's they wouldn't have the appetite for it? I don't think Hal has the appetite for it, period, under any However, if there was only one year left, I think they'd be having a different conversation. I mean, Hal does not like to pay people to not work. I mean, he's just, it's just, as I said in the story, and as a person who's familiar with Hal and has known him for years, has said to me, it's just not in his nature to punish people, fire them. He's just not a punitive guy like his father. But I think that he would be forced to act if Cashman didn't have four years of, of job security. There would, there would definitely be a different conversation. I think... Just for the public's sake, Hal has to show that he's doing something, that losing is not acceptable. So, yeah, theoretically, I think it would be a different circumstance. Bob Klappish, NJ.com, is our guest here on the Michael K. Show. You, know, you mentioned that he might call and cash and say, we've got to do things differently. But, Bob, from what I know, Hal is, is a guy who supports, truly supports analytics. So, I mean, does that yeah. mean changing the analytic yeah. people or going back to an old-school baseball guy? I think there, there is already a, a subtle shift towards old school. Look, I mean, Sean Casey, who you're going to have on your show in a couple of minutes, is proof of that. I mean, Cashman fired Dylan Lawson, which is basically admitting he made a mistake by going in all, all in on analytics for the, for, the, for the hitters. There's more to evaluating hitters and hitting and the craft than, than analyzing it on an iPad. Sometimes you need real-time experience from somebody who's actually done it at the major league level. I think... Casey is, is a, was a good choice. He probably needs a full spring training to work with these guys if he wants to do it next year, but it's the right move. Bring in Omar Minaya and Brian Sabian, who are old school, old school executives and talent evaluators, is also an endorsement of the way things used to be. Look, it, it, times have changed, Michael. And look, you and I go far enough back, we've covered the Yankees far enough in the past to realize it's just not the same in every aspect. I mean, you go into that clubhouse and you just don't get the sense that winning and losing on a day-by-day -day basis has that same emotional impact on the players. In part because there's now three wild cards, right? I mean, Derek Jeter and Paul O'Neill, Mariano, Tino, never, were never comforted, never had the safety net of three wild cards. You have that now. And I think probably the worst thing that could happen, I don't mean, and I mean that figuratively, not literally, but the fact that the, that the Phillies won 87 games last year and made it to the World Series. Now everybody's thinking all we have to do is win 87 games or 90 and we're fine, which is why you hear a lot of the Yankees say, and Boone, look, there's still time. It's still in front of us. Well, there's 48 games left. There's not that much time. 
They're four and a half games out in the wild card. It's the situation is not good. The odds are not in their favor, and yet I don't sense that great urgency. That man, we have to do something now. I haven't gotten that sense from from the Yankees this year. I mean, is it possible if you're on a team where when you strike out like 18 times, your manager comes out and says, "Well, besides the strikeouts, I, I liked what we did." That maybe the sense of urgency just you said it's you said in some ways Boone makes it a really peaceful locker room. You just wonder, yeah, if he makes it too peaceful a locker room. Yeah, I mean, look, and I've written that many times. I mean, Aaron Boone at some point has to say, look, this is not acceptable. You can't say that we did well except for the 18 strikeouts. It's an embarrassment. <laughs> no major league, no major league team should strike out 18 times. I don't care if you're facing. I don't care who you're facing. Maybe Sandy Koufax, but other than that, <laughs> there's no way the Yankees could go down to Baltimore and allow themselves to be struck out 18 times. It is an embarrassment. It was an embarrassment, and yet Aaron Boone won't say it because that's not the kind of guy he is. He wants everyone to feel okay. Look, let's put it behind us. Let's do it tomorrow. Let's do it. We'll come back tomorrow. We'll come back tomorrow. Eventually, you run out of tomorrow. Is we're saying that. Bob, well, they struck out 17 times yesterday and won. <laughs> so, I mean, that's that's part of the DNA. That's part of the way the team is put together. Well, that's part of the way baseball is played now. I mean, yeah. there's certainly not the same stigma of striking out that, that there used to be. And then, you know, that's a shame. Mm. Oh, did we lose Bob? I'm oh, here. Yeah. Oh, there, there you go. There you go. I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Um, did, you, did you hear the last thing I said? I did not hear the last part. What would you say? I said, well, look, there's certainly no stigma. There's certainly not the same stigma of uh, striking out in this day and age that it was back in the 80s and 90s. In that sense, the game has changed for the worse. And you certainly can't strike out 17, 18 times a game and feel good about it. I'm sorry. That's unacceptable. Now, Peter, before we let Bob go, I want you to know who you're talking to here. Bob, still, I'm not going to say what his age is, but he's close to my age. He pitches on a semi-pro team. They were just in Michigan, and they finished third in the country. Bob, when are you going to give it up? Uh, well, first of all, the name of the team is the Hackensack Trophy. It's an 18 and up league, so it's really, really good, great amateur baseball. So, to my teammates who are listening, and they are all big Yankee fans, Michael, um, say hello to them. Uh, my uh, my formula for the, my career, I am going to stop pitching with the day my age exceeds my fastball velocity, and I'm not there yet. So, wow, I, I like it. <laughs> right? So I still got a couple of years ago. <laughs> well, very, very interesting column today, Bob. Thank you so much for coming on. It gives us a lot to think about, and I know Yankee fans are not going to be pleased with what you're reporting, but uh, we'll see if the Yankees make the playoffs, or maybe all of this goes away. We'll see. We'll see. Yep. Thank you, Bob. Talk I'll see you at the stadium. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on. All right. Take care. Those are Diamond Notes, brought to you by